was working at a church, big church. <clears throat> I think we had eight buildings plus a couple of off-site properties in the same neighborhood. 2,000 seat arena, basically. One Friday afternoon, there was a water problem. <clears throat> Flooded part of the main hallway area outside the sanctuary. We got that fixed. <clears throat> I was a maintenance guy. Got that fixed. Had to dry out that carpet quick. Friday afternoon church service this Sunday morning so the end of that hallway had six doors on each end so you could open those doors up and get a pretty good airflow through there we had all those doors propped open had about six carpet drying fans going <clears throat> had the shop fan in there like a 30 inch airplane propeller type box fan that we had we were pumping some air through there doing the best we could to get that floor dry me and two other guys working maintenance that day and uh, I was sitting in there moving something around or something I don't remember I looked up <clears throat> Here comes a squirrel hopping through there. Dead damn it. Yeah. I've squirrel hunted before quite a quite a few times. But I didn't have my rifle with me this particular day. So I started following the squirrel. When he was making some headway, I called on our radio. Hey guys, gotta come over here and help me out. So we had three of us in there trying to triangulate this squirrel. Now this, in addition to having a 2,000 seat sanctuary, had all kind of hallways, my pipes out. <clears throat> about 20 rooms uh, offices there was all kinds of stuff in there all kinds of hiding places for a, a rodent and I tried to keep my eye on this little squirrel as he made his way down through the sanctuary and crossed the stage and went back behind the stage in the hallway where there's all kinds of storage and all kinds of places to hide but he just kept running I was right there behind him. I don't know what I would have done if I had caught him, but I chased him nonetheless. Came out the other end of that hallway, back across the stage, up the other side of the sanctuary, up the stairs, into the top hallway. And he climbed stairs a whole lot quicker than I did, and there were about 40 of them. So I lost him before the other two guys got there. Now the game is afoot. <clears throat> so we, we did the best we could to try to figure out a plan how to track this thing down, which wasn't much of a plan at all. It was basically look for the squirrel. Ended up having seven of us in there. Four other guys from another department were in there with us. Young guys that thought it was fun. We tracked this squirrel for a good 30 minutes. Every now and then somebody would see him and before they could get to where he was, he would duck down another alleyway. Sneaky little guy. Finally somebody yelled out, I got him, I got him. It was coming from an upstairs room. So we all made our way up there. And there used to be a dark room in there. It was more like a 
storage slash kitchen area now. He's in here. He went in here and I shut the door. All right. How are we going to get him out? <clears throat> we had um, coffee cups, styrofoam cups. We had one of those big boxes that they come in. It's about the opening on it's about foot and a half by a foot. The box is about three feet tall. So we had a couple of those. And we knew as soon as we opened that door he was going to fly out, or we thought he would. <clears throat> And the light was off in that room. So we, we got together and had those boxes on the floor in a way that if he came out, he would run into one of those boxes. We opened up the door. Total silence. Nothing. Did you sure you saw him go in here? Yeah, man, he's in here. I promise you. I saw him go in there. A couple of us had made our way into the room. We were kind of kicking around turned on the light and he was sitting up against the back wall just staring at us on all fours kind of like Dallas's squirrel right before he attacked him he was <laughs> he was in ready mode it's like alright <clears throat> so we started kind of sliding those boxes in trying to make a way where he couldn't get out of course squirrels can jump they're pretty good at that. And he started jumping. He ended up being up on the counter at one point, jumping across chairs underneath, just going crazy. I mean, and we were all pretty much like Dallas was in his story, trying not to get eaten by a squirrel, freaking out. Pretty much chaos. I think at this point there were four of us in the room and three of us outside. Finally, he made a break for the door, and when he did, he ran right in the box I had in my hand. I stood it up real quick and folded the top together, and you could hear him in there just scratching and jumping, and <laughs> boom, 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 doing all this stuff. Got him, took him outside, and got him far enough away from the building where he wouldn't run back in the other side of the property laid that box down. He was still kicking and scratching and pitching a fit. Opened that box up and he took off like a bolt of lightning. I don't guess I ever saw him again. If I did, I didn't know him. I looked down in that box and it was absolutely full of squirrel pee and poop. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> he spent his time in prison seeking revenge, I tell you. That box was just covered. So, Ray Stevens' Mississippi Squirrel Revival turned out to be a true story. Well, that's my squirrel story of the time that the evil squirrel got in the 2000 seat auditorium and took us for a 30 minute chase. Felt like the French connection. Cliff told a story as well. You guys go check out him and Full Doddle's video. I'm sure that many more people and uh, uh, Kilted Piper Steve also told one. I'm sure somebody else out there has a squirrel story. Feel free to share. This has been funny to watch and listen to. I cracked up with Kilted Steve's. That was great. Anyway, <clears throat> you guys watch out, man. Those little those little dudes are evil. <laughs>